What's good, email geeks? Welcome into another week, another edition of the Email Design Podcast, your home for all things email. We talk about design, development, and marketing. As always, we're your hosts. I'm Kevin Mandeville. And I'm Jason Rodriguez. And today on the podcast, we're going to get into some rendering news, talk about uh, some latest developments in Thunderbird. Uh, State of Email survey is out. But yeah, let's jump in right away to kick things off with some rendering news. Jason. Yeah, so, <clears throat> excuse me, a long-awaited release for Litmus. Uh, Samsung Mail is now available in Litmus email previews, uh, which is pretty awesome. This is one that gives a lot of people trouble, uh, and it's actually really, really popular, too. So it's something a lot of people have been clamoring for, and it's finally available for testing. So Samsung uh, is responsible for a large, large percentage of the Android device market share. Uh, so it's currently 47% of all Android devices are Samsung devices. Uh, and a lot of those devices are using Samsung Mail. Um, so as far as email client market share goes, uh, Samsung's native mail client, which is what's available for testing, accounts for about 5% of the email client market share. So definitely important to start testing in Samsung. Um, not too many rendering surprises for the most part in Samsung, even though it does seem to give some people some trouble has pretty good support for CSS, HTML, uh, supports for, you know, styles in the head, media queries, uh, classes, IDs, images are enabled by default, animated GIFs, all that good stuff. Really, the only major things that are lacking in Samsung Mail are HTML5 video support, uh, which is pretty much par for the course, so no big surprises there. Uh, web fonts don't work in Samsung Mail, and then interactivity via the checkbox hack also does not work in Samsung Mail, but animations like transitions and keyframes do work, so that's pretty cool. You're just not going to be doing any fancy interactive checkout processes or anything like that in your email if you're using Samsung Mail. Uh, there were a few uh, strange kind of rendering issues that we ran into during our testing. The uh, I guess the most notable being that sometimes we would see extra padding added, <clears throat> added around emails in that inbox view. Um, so that wasn't like a consistent thing that we saw. So it just happens to some emails. We couldn't really track down the cause of that. And then similar to that, we would see that padding and that emails aligned to the left of the screen, uh, which was, again, pretty inconsistent, a little bit weird to see, but just something to keep an eye out for. Uh, and the good thing about Samsung Mail is that you can actually target it as well. Mark Robbins uh, did some detective work and found out that Samsung Mail on the Galaxy S6 adds an ID of message view body to the body tag, followed by a div with the ID of message web view div. Uh, so if you do want to target Samsung specifically, then you could do something like ID of message view body and then add a class name for whatever you're targeting and then target that in the CSS so you can apply specific CSS for Samsung Mail. Um, so again, no massive surprises. There's a lot of stuff on like the Limus community. Uh, the email geek slack channel on Twitter of people getting uh, kind of confused by Samsung mail or seeing some issues there. Um, so definitely want to do a little bit more research if you are seeing issues in Samsung mail. But the good thing is you can start testing litmus today. Yeah. And down in the comments, Mark Robbins actually said that for the padding around emails issue, you could try using that targeting hack. So you could do the ID ah, of nice. message view body, yeah. the ID of message web view div, and then do min width of 100 VW. So 100 view port width with a margin zero important and a zoom of one important. Uh, you see a lot of these apps, they try to do some auto scaling with some zoom effects. Uh, and you can often overwrite them if you can target them by resetting the zoom and setting, you know, the padding margin to zero, changing the min width to 100 VW. So he also said that he's found that interactivity does work now. It was disabled for a short while, but the support's back in. So it may be dependent upon what version you're on, uh, or maybe it was just a server-side update. But definitely take a look out for that uh, if interactivity can work, uh, which I know is probably a minor edge case for all of you out there, but uh, good to know. Samsung overall, very good client. Yeah. So uh, should be good to see everybody testing away on that. Uh, additional, in addition to Samsung, there's also Libero now available in Litmus email previews. Uh, so as of May 2017, the latest stats, Libero had about 8 million active email accounts. Uh, so it, it, it can be a popular uh, webmail in the Italian market uh, for those of you who might have a big audience over there. 
Uh, so I guess some key things to note about this client, there is no preview tech support. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that for this particular client. Uh, and then as far as everything else goes, it actually has some pretty good support across the board. You know, things like media query support, embedded CSS support. Uh, again, one of the downfalls, no HTML5 video, no web fonts, no interactivity, and no animation. Uh, so very similar to Samsung, just no animation on top of it to boot. I thought it was interesting to note that CSS Grid is supported because it's a browser-based email client. So very, uh, very encouraging to see that CSS Grid is starting to slowly make its way into the support realm. I think the biggest thing just to watch out for that I picked up here is that just like Gmail, Libero clips your emails, but instead of having a nice 102 kilobyte limit. Libero is all the way down to 80 Ouch. kilobytes worth. Yeah. So that's a pretty small limit. Uh, you know, you can do a lot with that extra 22 kilobytes. So that's something you just need to watch out for. If you really care about having your emails clipped in Libero, it's going to be an 80 kilobyte limit. Good to know. Yeah, definitely check out Libero if you have those Italian openers and see our emails render. Um, some news from Engadget and Android Police. Uh, some new behavior in Gmail's inbox app at least on Android and the web, vo web view. Um, so it, there's reports of Gmail prompting users to unsubscribe from promotional emails that have been open in a month or more. Uh, so this could be important to email marketers, obviously, because we are the ones sending those promotional emails. Uh, so if a subscriber hasn't read one of your emails and it's dumped into that promos tag in over a month, then they might start seeing this prompt, this actual message that's uh, like a tip offered to them in inbox on the web version and Android uh, suggesting that they unsubscribe from your email list. So definitely something to watch out for. Um, I honestly think this is one of those features that email marketers might freak out about a little bit. Uh, but in the long run, it's good because, you know, you want to keep your list clean. If people aren't opening your emails, especially for that long of a period of time, then, you know, they're probably not good subscribers to have on your list anyways. Uh, so definitely want to keep out a lookout for that. Um, but I think in the long run, it's probably going to be one of those nice, good features that, People freak out about initially, but, you know, it's going to help the industry overall. Yeah, I don't view this as a negative, actually. I actually really like this feature. Like you said, there may be some freak out, but I think this is a net positive in the long run. I think Gmail, this is the one thing that I think Gmail really does well, right? When you take a look at the what they've done with their tabs, what they're doing with this now, I think they're really trying to promote healthy email lists and keeping engaged subscribers, not passive subscribers or inactive subscribers. So I don't think it's necessarily a, a bad thing. Obviously, you could see your unsubscribes go up, but if it's going to help the health of your list and increase your open rates, your click rates, and just, you know, just keeping your deliverability up, because you have to remember that's really a key component of what the long-term yep. game is for you. I think it's actually a nice thing, and I wouldn't be surprised to see more email clients uh, sort of go out of their way to try to implement features like yeah, this. Yeah, I'm curious to see if that happens too, especially, you know, like iOS mail prompts you um, to unsubscribe when it sees that it's from a mailing list. Um, so maybe they'll start doing something like this similar that's based on time and opens and stuff like that too. Uh, but yeah, nice move to see, you know, encouraging healthy email habits and healthier lists from Google. So we'll see what happens. So we're just going to take a quick break here, uh, come back in a minute talking about some Thunderbird news, but we just want to let you know you can catch the podcast at emaildesignpodcast.com. All the show notes and links and past episodes, we're almost up to 90 now. Uh, so what better way to wrap up your year or kick off your new year than listening to all that? Tweet along with the hashtag emaildesignpodcast and subscribe on SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. Um, and we have a great 14-day free trial of Litmus. You can go to litmus.com slash gift card and put the coupon code podcast. So when you're testing in all these clients like Samsung and Libero and then all your popular ones like Outlook and Gmail and iOS Mail, you've got it all covered. We have over 90 email clients now to test in. So pretty much have you covered no matter who your audience is or where they're opening. You can take a look and make sure your email email looks great and all those different clients before you go and hit the send button because there's nothing worse than you trying to make an email, put all this time and effort into creating a great uh, message and a great experience for subscribers and then it all falls apart because it's broken. There's nothing worse than that. So we want to make sure you don't have any fear when it comes time to send your email. So use Limits, make sure you test your email uh, and, and really it's the full email creative platform. You can test it, 
build with it, analyze it with analytics, everything to boot. It's all right there. So just go to litmus.com slash gift card and put the coupon code podcast for a free 14 day trial of litmus. On to some Thunderbird news. Uh, so I think we talked about this earlier in the year. Uh, Thunderbird made the announcement that they're essentially working on decoupling themselves from Mozilla as their parent organization, uh, trying to make the Thunderbird project more sustainable long term and more independent. Um, so finally, some new updated news from the Thunderbird team uh, as of the 19th of December. They have added four new staff members that are going to be helping with that transition, devoting their full time uh, tech you know, work lives to updating the technology that's underlying Thunderbird, updating the add-ons engine, fixing bugs, all that stuff. Some long overdue love for Thunderbird. And with that's going to be coming some new releases of the Thunderbird email client. Um, so Thunderbird obviously has been around for a really, really long time. Uh, it's up to version 58 is going to be the new one that's going to be going into beta here. Uh, so a long, long history, a really popular email client. I have family members that swear by Thunderbird, um, but it's good to see that it's finally getting some love. It seems like they're taking a similar approach that Mozilla has taken to uh, recent versions of Firefox, where they're working on updating the underlying engine behind Thunderbird, um, just like they did in Firefox. They're re-architecting how people build add-ons for the email client, just like they did for Firefox. Um, so they're looking at making it you know, speedier, more stable. Uh, they've introduced a new visual design for Thunderbird based on Mozilla's Photon uh, visual approach. So a lot of work going into Thunderbird, uh, which is pretty cool to see. We're still kind of uh, waiting to see if that has any rendering implications as far as email design development goes. Um, but it's good to see that this classic email client is getting the love that it's deserved for a long, long time. Yeah, I remember we talked about this a while ago, uh, and we weren't too sure how much change was really going to come about. But I would say this is a really positive development. And, you know, Thunderbird's a great email client for us. So anything that can really boost the market share for Thunderbird, I think we'll all be on board for. Exactly. All right, we got, uh, I guess, a little bit of self-promotion here uh, on my end. Uh, earlier this year, um, in, uh, back in November, a couple a month ago, I guess, I released an update to one of my books, Professional Email Design, but kind of rebranded it as The Better Email uh, on Design is the name of that book, um, and expanded it pretty, pretty significantly. Um, so it's not just a book, it's also kind of video tutorials as well. Um, so I set up website, thebetter.email. Uh, so if you want to check that out, go to thebetter.email slash design. You can see what you would learn through that book. There's 225 page PDF, which is about 100 extra pages from the previous version of the book. And then over six hours of me talking to you about email design development, walking you through that process and giving you kind of like a hands on visual uh, learning guide to email design development. Um, so I'm pretty excited about this. I've, you know, had a lot of great feedback from people that have bought it already. Um, and I'm looking at, you know, kind of building it out from here and growing those lear learning resources. Uh, so if you are kind of new to the email world, if you've been in the email world for a long time and want to up your email development skills, then definitely check out the better.email slash design for the latest copy of the book and video tutorials. Yep. And I, I mean, I've mentioned this to you in private before, but such a steal, so underpriced. I mean, it's $39 for the PDF alone, which is peanuts. And then, you know, the videos and, and PDF and videos get a little bit bigger at 119, 129. But even at that, if you were just to evaluate what you're investing into and the amount of time you'll save from the learnings from this, it is, I guarantee most people tenfold at least. So I think it's an absolute steal for anybody who especially doesn't have a ton of domain knowledge on this. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, Jason, you've obviously listened to us here on the podcast. Everybody knows what we're talking about here. So Jason's a, a great expert to learn from on this stuff. And I mean, just taking a look at the, the website alone, you can just see how well designed everything is, the great user experience. So I mean, yeah, definitely well worth the plug here and well worth your time to check out. It's a great, great gift, a great way to start off the new yeah, year. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> describe it to people as, you know, if the video is essentially getting a six hour, like one on one workshop with me for about 120 bucks, which mm. is, yeah, I guess a steal. I'm, you know, I'm terrible at pricing, Kevin. We've talked about this plenty of times. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it goes over all kinds of things, you know, like foundational HTML and CSS, typography, accessibility, uh, using images, buttons, making things responsive. 
Uh, and I like this one because I went more into workflows, uh, troubleshooting process, and then animation interactivity as well. So if you do want to kind of amp up your development, your email designs, then it's definitely a good resource. Yeah, runs the gambit on everything. So check it out, thebetter.email, or you could also do thebetter.email slash design for that yep. particular book and course. All right, moving on. I thought this was some great news in the industry. Inc. named their company of the year, and it was our good friends over at MailChimp. Uh, so, I mean, it's pretty incredible. MailChimp, you know, they're now 17 years into the game never took on any outside investment and they're doing about 525 million dollars a year and they really have i mean quite honestly one of the biggest tech yeah. brands uh, out there right i mean i think mailchimp's one of those one of those um companies that even you know your your non-technical family friends w- might have heard or known about just because mailchimp seems to be yeah. everywhere so i thought this was very encouraging and hey email is not dead folks not dead company of the year isn't email yeah i company. like this is really you know vindicating email folks and showing that email is such a valuable thing for everybody. And that's, I think that's the key with MailChimp too, is like you pointed out, everybody knows MailChimp. Um, It does seem to be everywhere. And it's one of those few companies outside of like hardware manufacturers like Apple or Google or, um, you know, big company like Microsoft that people know what they are and what they do for the most part, which is a huge testament to their work. It's crazy to think that they've been around for 17 years now. Like that's, that's just insane to me to think that yeah mailchimp's been around it, it still feels like such a fresh new uh energetic company which is you know a testament to their hard work so kudos mailchimp great to see you guys named as uh inks you know company of the year uh moving on uh the last little bit of litmus news uh we are encouraging all of you to go check out the 2018 State of Email Survey. Uh, So this is our third annual State of Email Survey where we're asking for you feedback information about everything related to your email program. Um, So it's it's the survey you can go to. We'll link to it in the show notes. Uh, It'll take a little while. It's pretty in-depth. It asks a lot of questions about everything from planning to design, deliverability, development, what tools you use, your team makeup anything related to your email program. Um, but we really want you to, you know, take the time to go through this thoroughly, answer the questions as honestly as possible, because this has been such a help for not only us at Limus for producing these reports, but we've gotten so many comments and so much feedback from people uh, when they go through our previous annual state of email surveys or those reports. Um, You know, it allows them to compare their company, their program to other companies and other email programs, uh, compare their team makeup, their workflow, and just get all these great tips and ideas that allows them to improve their own work on a very practical level. Um, So yeah, we we want as many people as possible to take a survey. The more data we get, the better it is for everybody. Um, And as an extra incentive for taking it, then we're offering a chance to win a free ticket to Litmus Live, the obviously greatest email design and marketing conference in the world, um, or one of four mystery Litmus swag packs. So if you complete it by January 31st, you'll be entered to win that. Um, We'll get some great data. data. We'll share that in a series of reports over the next year. um, And you'll get the chance to come to Litmus Live for free or get some cool Litmus swag. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, this, this helps all of us in the industry. Uh, This is my favorite thing that we do at Litmus for content each and every year, because we generate so much insight that is helpful for everybody. There's no other survey that's been uh, developed in the email industry that lets people know how much like somebody's salary, like what our salaries are. So what to expect there, how many tasks per role somebody's doing, what tools people are using. It's just so beneficial for everybody to take this. So it is a little bit on the longer side. It's not a quick five minute survey. It is going to take you 30 to 45 minutes most likely, but it's worth the time. So please, 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 everybody take it, share it, get your coworkers, your email friends to do it because we all benefit from this. Um, and like you said, the fact that there's just some nice incentives, you could win a free trip to our conference. I mean, what more could you possibly need? Uh, so yeah, please, 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 everybody, you will make our year if you do that. All right, let's talk about this email of the week, Kevin. This is your pick, which (laughs) email of the week. This is my pick coming at us from Netflix again, which is, uh, 
you know, I guess off off in future, but I, I wanted to showcase this one for a couple of different reasons. So number one, we'll start with the subject line here. So this is an email that they sent out for their new series called The Punisher. Uh, and their subject line says suspicious activity. And then they just use sort of a, a bar, which which looks kind of like a blackout. And it says Marvel on Netflix with another bar. Um, so they try to create some intrigue and some interest. I thought it was very cool how they use the two bars in the subject line, something you don't see every day. So that really made it stand out. And then let me refresh the page here since um, I didn't catch the very beginning in the animation. Um, but it's really cool because it shows you this, this letter to start out with, right? And that's what you think the actual email is. And then the animation takes over and you're like, whoa, what's going on? It seems like a glitch. And that's when the letter sort of starts to just disappear. And then the true Punisher artwork comes into play. Uh, so what I liked about this is that, again, the subject line, but then it was just very attention grabbing once you were inside the email. Uh, I would say the downside is that, yes, this is all one image, which isn't necessarily ideal. However, I don't know that there could be any other way of implementing this. I think this is something to where you have to use uh, an animated GIF. If you you were to use CSS animation, I don't think it would be very smooth um, at all. I mean, maybe you could use a video, but again, that's not really going to be supported everywhere. So uh, I thought this was... uh, it was unique in terms of this was something you didn't see every single day. So from a like a strategy, a design strategy, and an experience strategy perspective, I thought it was unique. It was something they took a chance, and I think it definitely pays off given the the, the theme of the show and the tone of the show to do yeah, something Yeah, I absolutely like this. love this. Um, you know, I think it, absolutely, if anybody knows The Punisher from the Marvel Comics series, you know, it's very fitting with that show, that character. It looks awesome. Um, I did think it was, yeah, it was definitely a risk because if somebody sees that subject line suspicious activity and that's all they see in their email inbox um you know they could think that's mm-hmm. like a phishing scam or something like that so i think strategy wise it was very very risky of them to send something with that subject line uh but i think it does pay off because it fits in perfectly with the theme of the show theme of the character and like you said this animated gif is awesome it's fantastic i agree you couldn't pull this off smoothly in us uh, using CSS animations or anything like that, but it definitely works. And it's, you know, Netflix is one of those senders. They've sent large gifts before. Um, a lot of their emails are all image based or, you know, animated gifts. So I think they have that reputation, that deliverability uh, reputation where they can get away with this too. And it's not going to really affect the experience for subscribers. Uh, so well done Netflix yet again. Yep, Absolutely. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the podcast. This is our, I think it might be our last podcast of the year. We'll see. Um, But if so, thank you so much again for a great year, everybody. And reminder, you can catch the podcast at emaildesignpodcast.com. Full show notes, links, and full archive right there. Tweet along with the hashtag emaildesignpodcast. You can subscribe on SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. And don't forget, a free 14-day trial of Litmus. Just go to litmus.com slash gift card, coupon code podcast. All right, email geeks. See you next time time.